What is up, guys, and welcome back to the Sweat It Out Podcast Money Vault segment. Today, followed by my co-host, Brian Garita. What is up, brother? What's going on, man? What do we got for today? Um, we got some interesting topics coming up with the a lot of interesting things. I know you put some up here. Which is the first one you want to attack, Anthony? Oh, you want me to go attack mode? All right. First one, let's talk about why the Tesla stock fell on Wednesday. And, and also to tie in with that, you know, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the Tesla uh, being on autopilot, which killed two people in Gardena. Is the driver guilty of manslaughter? Do you think that that had to do part of the Tesla stock dropping a bit? What do you think? Um, of course, I mean, it's a terrible thing that somebody passed away driving a Tesla and it's a sad, unfortunate event for most people that very, very sad, you know, that passed away driving period. Um, if we're going to talk about just the stock, I don't think this is anything that's going to affect Tesla later down the road. I think this is just a, a situation that happened, but I think what's going on right now with the stock is just, um, in interest going up inflation, it's, it's not playing to this market. The tech sector is really getting, uh, pummeled right now um i think tesla is is gonna be fine gotcha Long yeah term. i know that i don't i also know that they're saying that uh you know investors seem to be taking profits on some of the stocks that are performed the market meaningfully over the last year so you would say people are now just taking some of that money out and putting it into other places that are actually uh well i guess during that time frame seem more meaningful for them would you say that yeah i mean they're just taking profits off the table so it, it makes sense. Tesla's in a good position, man. So why, in your case, if you had Tesla stock, hold on to it, grab it, sell it, put it into somewhere else that's being more meaningful, or just ride the wave and just say, hey, hold on to your Tesla stock all the way. Just ride the wave. Mm. Brian's a holder. I'm a holder, man. Brian's they, a holder. Think about it. They're the only ones right now in the market that have an advantage when it comes to AI and driverless technology and all the data that they have. Yeah. There is no competition. Now, here's a question, though. You know, for this unfortunate event that happened about the car being on autopilot, killing two people, um, you know, this person being considered for manslaughter. In that situation, do you feel that that person should be considered for manslaughter? And would you now be hesitant to get a Tesla because of that? Because that can happen to you or anybody else. Um, I don't know much about that, about what happened there. What was the, the, the case behind that? So... Honestly, I have no idea what to tell you about that. Now, would I be hesitant on um, buying a Tesla? No, I wouldn't be hesitant. A lot of people pass away in, in car accidents all the time. Um, a Tesla, whether it crashes or whatever happens to it, really wouldn't have any effect. Well, let me tell you this. This is what it said. As, as the car proceeded through the intersection, a 2016 Tesla Model S on autopilot exited a freeway, ran through a red light, and crashed into the Civic. The Civic's drivers, um, you know, and passenger were killed instantly. Okay. Um, I don't know. What was the guy intoxicated? Was he, what was he on? Was something going on there? I don't know. I have no idea, bro. But aren't these smart cars supposed to uh, react? Again, bro, I don't know. Would you buy a Tesla? <sighs> well, I told you the only reason why I wouldn't buy a Tesla right now is because I don't think it's sporty enough for the price point. It has to be sportier. It has to, I, I don't know. I'd rather go and get a Porsche that's electric than a Tesla because it's nice for around the same price point. Like, I'm going to be honest. I'm being honest, honest here. I agree. I agree that the Porsche electric looks nicer than the Tesla, but the Tesla technology is way, way advanced. So you'd rather pay for technology or aesthetic? Um, it depends. I'd rather go with technology all day. Okay, so you're more of a technology base, strong suit versus the Porsche brand. The, the Tesla doesn't look bad. It doesn't, it doesn't, <sighs> it doesn't, the design doesn't look bad. It looks better than some other cars, but. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It looks a little bit uh, downplayed versus some of these sports cars. For the price point that you're paying for that Tesla, even the sports model Tesla. Versus a Porsche, the Porsche is nicer, man. The Porsche is nicer, but the Tesla is a, is a strong brand. The technology behind it is way better. I guess you're right on that. Yeah. I mean, 
There's, there's without a doubt. So should people then buy Tesla stock right now since it's down? I think people should be buying Tesla stock, period. Just because it's a, it's a good hedge on what's going to happen in the future. It has a great... Think about it. The adoption of electric cars hasn't even happened yet to the extent of gasoline cars. There's still more gas-powered cars than there are electric cars by, like, thousands of miles. Mm-hmm. The moment that those cars start changing to electric, Tesla is directly going to benefit from it because they have the advantage in technology with the data they, they've captured already with their um, artificial intelligence and with their um, their driver's technology. I don't see no reason why Tesla wouldn't release that information out to these car companies and sell it and profit off their uh, proprietary technology that they have. So Tesla's in a great position to win. I agree. So, Brian, the big question here is, are you a Tesla stockholder? Yeah, I'm a Tesla guy. Do you hold Tesla stock? I hold Tesla stock. Yeah? Yeah. A lot of it? I hold a good amount. Okay. I still have to work. <laughs> Do you own it? Do I own it? Not yet. Well, you should buy, bro. You should. You haven't told me. I don't need to tell you, man. You the thing is, you hide these things from me, bro. That's the problem. You hide these things from me. Next year, there's another stock that pops out, and I find out you have it. You never even told me once. Brian, keep, Brian keeps the best kept secrets to himself. That's the problem. No, man. It's, no one asked me. I just pulled the trigger. Brian just went until I go into Tesla and see what happens. If it goes on autopilot or if it doesn't. Yeah, when Anthony buys it, hopefully nothing happens to him. And then I'll buy it right after. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. All right. On to the next one. We're actually going to go to the competitor side of things. Um, we're going to talk about... Space Focus SPAC brings in $287.5 million with former Blue Origin president as CEO. What is your take on this? So repeat that one more time. So Space Focus SPAC brings in $287.5 million with former Blue Origin president as CEO. Space. Okay. And what are they trying to do? Like what specifically are, are they doing with that SPAC? So right here, so basically here, I'll read it to you. A blank check company that has former Blue Origin president Rob um, Meisterson as its CEO has completed a $287.5 million initial public offering, furthering its plans to link up with ventures focusing on space, cybersecurity, and energy innovation. Well, space is the new frontier. I think a lot of people are not, are, if they haven't picked it up already, that space is the new frontier. It's the future. Um They've been talking about space mining for a long time. There's a lot yeah. of resources up there. It's a new industry. Even space wars, bro. Space yeah. army. All that shit. Yeah. It's wild. Read this. Look, the strategy typically accelerates the process of going public, and it's been used with a growing number of space ventures, including Virgin Galactic, Virgin Orbit, Rocket Lab, Black Sky, and Astra. So... Seattle area telecom pioneer Craig McCaw played a key role in SPAC deal involving Astra, which set that company's value at $2.1 billion. So, as you can see, there is a space race going on. Who's going to dominate? Who's your, who's, your, who's your caller? Who's your taker? I think SpaceX is ahead of everyone right now. Even um, Blue Origin. Yeah, Blue Origin. Jeff Bezos owns Blue Origin. Of course. So, um... I think SpaceX is really SpaceX has the lead right now, and then Blue Origin number two. Yeah, Blue yeah. Origin number two. So, do you think that there's going to be Amazon packages being delivered in space? For sure, that's coming. Yeah, yeah. Damn, you're, let's see how fast that is. You're gonna have a drone. <sighs> what they're gonna do is they're gonna send the missile right at you, bro. A missile like with an packages. Iron Man suit. You know when they shoot the suit and it flies across the the country, and Iron Man gets his suit. They're yeah. gonna send the packages like that. That's what they're gonna do. They're gonna put your car up there. And you order it, and the car gets to you within within 24 hours. <laughs> they launch it as a missile to your house. Damn, imagine. Think about this. How crazy would it be as the world gets more dense, and we, you know, eventually there's just so, there's not enough real estate. They start building real estate up in, the, in space, and they build warehouses in space. And the warehouses launch vehicles, or they launch pods that sent out your packages or your cars or stuff inventory into into the earth from space. Yeah. How wild would that be? That would be crazy, man. Amazon or Tesla or SpaceX? Who would take over? Who do you think? If it's the packages shit, for sure Amazon. And then what about the other stuff? 
Well, if SpaceX stays ahead of the game, then SpaceX. Um, and Tesla will be the first space car dealership. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's Elon Musk's biggest play. He, that's why he invested in, in SpaceX, so he can deliver his cars from outer space. How wild would that be? If that's the case, then he just found the biggest loophole in the world. I'm investing in Tesla stock today. And you should buy it. I man. just created a theory right now that makes sense. Imagine if Elon watches this video and he's like, man, that's a great idea. Elon, look, just give me at least 1%. 1%. You give me 1%, I'm, I'm happy. That would be fantastic, bro. Shh, Brian would be like, Anthony, just give me something. <laughs> that's, that's too crazy, bro. <laughs> Love it. All right, moving on to the next topic. Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard, which could really hurt GameStop. Now, here's the thing. Microsoft acquired Activision Blizzard because they want to bring the joy and community of gaming to everyone across every device. All right? So here, here's the thing. With, with this being said, um, with the 3 billion people actively playing games today and fueled by a new generation steeped in the joys of interactive entertainment, gaming is now the largest and fastest growing form of entertainment. So Microsoft buying Activision is going to make them a leader in game development and interactive entertainment um, in, in that space of that er of, of the space of the gaming era. So this acquisition, acquisition will accelerate the growth in Microsoft's gaming business across mobile, PC, console, and cloud, and will provide building blocks for the metaverse. Huge gameplay right here. And this is not only a huge gameplay, but this is going to make them the world's, lar the world's third largest gaming company by revenue, behind Tencent and Sony. So this is a great positioning for Microsoft right here. What do you think? I think that's huge. What I do you think it's going to do to the gaming industry? I think it's just going to accelerate everything. I think it's just going to accelerate all of us to, to go into the metaverse. And now, now look at this. Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard changes the scope of key inputs into our prospective GameStop model. Both companies are key vendors to GameStop. A combo fortifies power over the retailer. Could reshape volumes of Activision titles if made exclusive to Xbox. And port and port is a more rapid transition to cloud-driven dri IP gaming. So this is going to be a huge, huge uh, detriment for GameStop being a vendor. So I'm telling you, man. Then everybody has to get on that GameStop stock. <laughs> Out of it right now. Everybody who was jumping on it, when GameStop had that explosion, what was it, a few months ago? Everybody get the hell out. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, that was expected, though. That was er just everyone, that was a little pump. Now they were just driving that to pump it. Yeah, everyone was expecting that to happen, so I'm not even surprised. But, look, the, the metaverse is the biggest key here. The metaverse is the biggest play. And the reason why the metaverse is the biggest play here is because, at the end of the day, that's what everybody's trying to get their hands on. Everybody's trying to understand it, learn more about it be more educated about it, and be the leaders in it. And now Microsoft being who Microsoft is, buying Activision, making them so strong that they're the largest, they're going to have a big edge here, man. They're going to have a big edge on doing some wild stuff with the metaverse. Um, and it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very, very interesting. What's more interesting, dude, is if you see how much money the gaming industry is making till today, it's one of the biggest, largest um, you know, multi-billion dollar industries in the world. Yeah. That's, it's, it's crazy. It's so crazy. The amount of money that's out there that's floating around in this, it's, it's nuts. So, Brian, when you used to play video games, did you ever think that we would be to where we're at today? Did you ever think video games from when we were kids would be to, to the way that things are now? Um, I always had a feeling that it was going to get to the level of where we're at right now where gaming is viewed as, like, sports. You know, um, sometimes my free time, I like to watch uh, YouTube videos, of people playing video games. Do you? Yeah. Like I who? Who's your favorite guy that you watch? I'll just watch random ones. So it doesn't matter. You just put one on. You're like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Like if I'm trying to learn a new game, I'll watch uh, some guys play it, try to pick up some some tactics. What's the f latest game that you've played? Honestly, I haven't played a game. in The last one that you played that you can remember. Uh, Call of Duty. All right. What Call was your experience? It was pretty good. That last game experience you had. It was a good experience. I had a good time with it. But then I got off it because I had to 
I had other better things to do. Best gamer you ever played with? The best gamer was your brother. <sighs> That's a crazy story right there. Your brother, your brother was was the best G- gamer. Give these people the reason why why you're saying that. What what happened? A little quick run through. So Anthony would tell us for a long time, me and my buddies, that his brother was fantastic at video games. Um, so one day I called him up and said, "Hey, join us on a game. It's the middle of the pandemic." And we don't have anybody else to join, so we're missing another person. Jumped on the team. We ran it with the squad. Um, the moment we started, this guy was just on another level. We didn't even start the game. I think he killed like five people. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, oh, shit, okay, this guy, this guy is serious. And then I would just look at him, and the way that his uh, character was moving, it just, <laughs> it was like swirling around all over the place. I'm like, what the hell is he doing? He's calling out positions of other of other enemy players and i'm like holy shit me and my boys were like bro this guy's different like what's going on here so then as we pers- we keep on going the map and it starts shrinking um we get to the point where he runs out of he runs out of ammo so then all my boys we just dropped all of our all of our ammunition our guns and we said hey take it and uh we ended up winning the game <sighs> so the, the guy's really good he he's he's on another playing field so for any gamers out there who um who are uh, evolving their game and taking things to the next level and really want to take this seriously, guys, be smart. Start recording yourselves. Start making money off your gaming skills. Don't just sit at home and play games and, ca- and don't capital and not capitalizing on it. Because I, I, that's one thing I used to tell my friends that I had and my brother. Capitalize on your skill sets. Brian, if my brother capitalized on those skill sets, he'd probably be a millionaire right now. It, yeah, if that's what he wanted to do. Look, I'll tell you guys, this guy, at one point, I remember when we were younger kids, he was ranked number three in the world in Call of Duty. I think it was the f- second or first Modern Warfare. He was ranked number three in the world. So, yeah, gaming's insane, man. Gaming is a lot of potential, a lot of growth, and what's interesting is what's going to happen in the metaverse. Uh, Brian, anything else to wrap up this segment with that you want to hit the people with? Um, Honestly, man, I don't... Nothing much. Just to pick it back off what you said by your brother, I think that it's it comes back down to more when you start doing games or doing things that you love and trying to make it as a business. For some people, you lose the love of actually doing that thing that you were doing before. So, you know, I don't see anything wrong with not making money with it if you if it generally makes you feel better inside. And I put that with with everything. I agree. I agree. No, no, one hundred percent. Now, here's the thing. When you catch yourself complaining about something over and over again, then that means you need to change something. But, that hey. I, that I agree with. You don't always have to have every hobby turned into an income machine. I agree 100%. Um, but, guys, I appreciate you for tuning in to the Sweat It Out podcast Money Vault segment. Hope you got value out of this video. Hope you learned something because the more love you show us, the more love we can show back. So, like, subscribe, share, comment. And please share this with everybody around you. Till next time on the Sweat It Out podcast.